Hello, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our Veterans Day presentation. This year, our Veterans Day program will look a little different. Out of concern for the safety of our staff, students, the community, and our veterans, our program is virtual this year. It will be published on our school website, Facebook, and YouTube on Veterans Day, November 11th, 2020. My name is Chris Schwaller. I'm a teacher here at the School District of Flambeau, and I myself am a veteran. It's my pleasure to open our virtual program to thank our veterans for their service. We want to let our veterans know how much we appreciate them and how badly we will miss seeing them and shaking their hands this year. We are mailing out cards from our students to area veterans that we have their addresses for to let them know we are thinking about them. If you have a veteran in your family or community, please consider reaching out to them today to thank them for their service. And I think I speak for all of us by saying a big thank you from our entire Flambeau family. With that, please enjoy our presentation. We hope to see you all in person next year. I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. 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 Of the United States of America. 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 And to the Republic. 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 And to the Republic for which it stands. 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 Of which it stands. For 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 which it stands. One nation. 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 Under God. 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 Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. 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 Indivisible a liberty and justice for all. Indivisible with 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 liberty and justice for all.
My nation, I'm the God, and the food for special liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we Hi, my name is Jaden Stewart, and I'm going to be talking about the 13 folds. The flag itself. The portion of the flag denoting honor is the canton of blue containing the stars representing states our veterans serve in uniform. The field of blue dresses from left to right and is inverted only when draped as a funeral cloth over the casket of a veteran who has served our country honorably in uniform. In the U.S. Army Forces, at the ceremony of retreat, the flag is lowered, folded in a triangle, and kept under watch throughout the night as a tribute to our nation's honored death. The next morning, it is brought out at a ceremony of review, flown high as a symbol of belief in the resurrection of the body. Most Americans have seen the, tra the traditional folding of the American flag at specific events such as funerals. Have you ever wondered why Old Glory is folded that specific way, much more than just pomp and circumstance? Each of, the, each of the 13 folds holds a special meaning. The 13 folds. The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in eternal life. The third fold is made of honor and remembrance of veterans departing our ranks and who gave a portion of his or her life in the defense of our country to attend peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature. As American citizens trusting in God, it is him we turn to in times of peace, as well as in the times of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country in the world of Stephen de Kerr. Our country in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but still our country right or wrong. The sixth fold is where our hearts lie. It is our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who internal into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day to honor our mother for whom it flies on, flies on Mother's Day. The ninth fold is a tribute to our womanhood. It has been through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that has molded the character of the men and women who have made this country great. The tenth fold is a tribute to Father, who has given his sons and daughters for defense of our country since he or she was first born.
the eleventh fold represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon, and glorifies the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies God the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost. The thirteenth fold and last fold. When the flag is completely folded and the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our nation motto, and God we trust. After the folding ceremony. After the flag is completely folded and tucked in, it has the appearance of a cocked hat, ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under Jen. George Washington and the sailors and marines who served under Cap, John Paul Jones, and were following their comrades and shipmates in the U.S. Armed Forces, preserving us for the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today. The source, the source of the date and the origin of this flag folding procedure are unknown. However, some resources attribute it to the gold stars, star mothers of America, while others to Air Force chaplains stationed at the United States Air Force Academy. Some sources also indicate that the 13 folds are a nod to the original first 13 colonies. The flag folding ceremony is provided at a patriotic service. How they represent the flag to the military families. When they are done folding, they take it and give it to the family member of the fallen soldier to remember, to remember their name. VA policy on flag folding recitation of the 13 fold ceremony. To ensure the burial services at the 143 National Cemeteries operate, operate, operated by, their, by the Department of the Veterans Affairs reflect the wishes of veterans and their families. VA officials have clarified the department's policy about recitations made by the U.S. flag. Fold, flag is folded at the gravesite of a veteran. Honoring the burial wishes of a veteran is one of the highest commentaries for the men and women of VA said William F. Turk, VA's un Under Secretary for Memorial Affairs. A family may request recitation of words to accompany the meaningful presentation of the American flag as we honor the dedication and sacrifice of their loved ones. Traditional gravesites, military funeral honors, including the silent folding and presentation of the U.S. flag, three of dollars and the playing of taps. Thank you.
I've been in the USA for a little more than two months now, but it didn't take long to notice how different this country is from my own country, which is Italy. Since the very first day, I could notice a lot of differences. First thing first, as soon as I got out of the Minneapolis airport, where I arrived on August 23rd, I could see flags in almost every house's front doors. This was really weird to me, because in Italy I'm used to see flags only in city councils or justice halls. Another thing that was so new to me was that every time Americans have to do something important for themselves or for the nation, they sing the national anthem. For instance, every time I have a swim meet here in the US, we sing the hymn before we start racing. Also at school, even if we don't sing the anthem, we recite the Pledge of Allegiance every morning before lessons start. To me, American people do that to remind themselves in every occasion that they are part of something, they are part of a nation and they are proud to show that. This is what patriotism means to me, not to be ashamed of who we are and where we come from. For what I've seen so far, the United States are the perfect example of patriotism and this is really fascinating to someone who had never experienced being so patriotic before, like me. Showing love for the nation is such a beautiful thing and I think that everyone should do that, as well as Americans do every day. What I think patriotism means. What do you think of when you think about patriotism? Is it just a flag hanging on your house? When I think about patriotism, I think about helping other people, cleaning up the world, and being in service. I think about clubs that raise money for other people, clubs like Girl Scouts. They raise money for people with cancer, orphans, and hospitals. Clubs save money for good causes. Some clubs save money for cancer research, or even a new gym for a school. Some clubs save money to help other people have a better life or an improved one. Once I participated in a group that saved up money for a local group that made prosthetics for disabled people. These fundraisers mean a lot to people that, affect, that they affect and they are really fun to do. Another way that I think that people show patriotism is by holding cleaning committees that clean up parks or even buildings. They do this so people can visit the places they love again. For example, a little kid may be able to go to his favorite park again. Cleaning even helps the world become a healthier place. It also helps a lot of animals on the earth. My last thought about patriotism is about helping other people, is by helping people that protect us. Our, the veterans of the world have protected us our whole lives. These people know what the meaning of patriotism and being brave to stand up to the world is. They know a lot of hurt so we don't have to because they fight in the wars for us. They are the best and true meaning of patriotism. These are the ones who have been through a lot by being in wars. For example, my great grandfather was in World War II and help me and the world get to where we are today. And if anyone has fought in the world and showed more patriotism than they can ever show, they are the veterans. In conclusion, I think that patriotism is about helping other people that are in trouble, cleaning the world, and serving in the world. So go, go show your version of patriotism today. Command Sergeant Major John Vacco graduated from Ladysmith High School in 1971. He joined the Wisconsin Army National Guard in 1974 and transferred to the U.S. Army Reserve in 1978. While a member of the Army Reserve, he has completed multiple staff, administrative, and leadership courses culminating in the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy graduating in 1997. During his 39-year military career, Command Sergeant Major Vaco has served in a multitude of positions to include 
team leader, squad leader, platoon sergeant, first sergeant, and command sergeant major. As a command sergeant major, he has served in the 376th Finance Battalion in Wausau, the 302nd Maintenance Battalion in Arden Hills, Minnesota, the 397th Engineer Battalion in Eau Claire, the 391st Military Police Battalion in Abu Ghraib, Iraq, and most recently the 88th Regional Readiness Command headquartered at Fort Snelling, Minnesota, which encompassed six states and 22,000 Army Reserve soldiers. Command Sergeant Major John Vaca retired in 2013 and is currently the AMVET Post 127 of Ladysmith Commander. He was recently honored as the Wisconsin AMVET Post Commander of the Year for 2020. It is my pleasure to introduce our 2020 Veterans Day Program guest speaker, Command Sergeant Major John Vaco. Good morning. Uh, my name is John Bacco of Ladysmith. I am a military veteran and I am the, currently the commander of AMVETS Post 127 in Ladysmith. Veterans Day was originally uh, Armistice Day, which was November 11th, 1918, when World War I ended. And 1954, they changed, the uh, U.S. government changed it to Veterans Day because since World War I, they also had World War II and Korea, the Korean War, which ended in 1953. It's a day that's set aside to say thank you to all living veterans uh, for their courage, their sacrifice, and their service to our great nation. A veteran is someone who has worn this country's uniform. Veterans serve in times of peace as well as during wartime. Why did we serve? Some, some of us simply just became of age. We turned 18, 19, 20. Some of us went in when we were 17. And all the way into our 20s and even our early 30s. We thought it was something that we wanted to do. We thought maybe it was a good job opportunity, that it had economic opportunity for us. Um, maybe we went in for educational benefits. Uh, some of us might have had a bad situation at home that we felt we needed to get out of. And maybe some of us had a run-in with the law. Um, back then, and back in the day, the judges would say, you go into service and we'll drop the charges. It's not that way anymore. If you get into trouble, you have even too many speeding tickets and things like that, the military don't want you. Uh, they will not take you into service today. Back in back quite a while ago, they used to do that. And maybe there was a war going on, and it was, everybody felt, or somebody felt that they needed to do their part. Okay? And they call that patriotism. Some of us were drafted. That means you didn't have a choice. You, you got drafted, and, and, and you went into the service, and, and that was uh, just the way, the way it was. Uh, Men and women served in all branches of the service. People don't realize that 17 to 20 percent of your veterans today are currently serving are women uh, in the military. So they serve in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, the National Guard, and the Army Reserve. A little story of how, how did I come to enlist in the military service? Uh, how many of you uh, wanted to grow up and be just like mom and dad? I know I did. Um, I was a kid growing up in the 1960s. It was about the 100th anniversary of the Civil War, the American Civil War. I was eight years old in 1961, uh, 12 years old in 1965, and that was the, the 100th anniversary of the Civil War. And there was a lot of movies and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, news on uh, uh, TV and radio and things like that about the American Civil War on that 100th anniversary. So we got uh, we got attuned to that and we watched a lot of movies. 
Um, at the time, there were a ton of World War II movies on, on TV. Um, our fathers and some others were World War II veterans. Um, my father was a World War II veteran too. Um, he was he was my hero at the time growing up. As a kid growing up during that time, I used to, because it was so, so uh, in tune with uh, uh, TV and, and everything that was going on. I used to go up into my parents' attic, and inside my parents' attic was a chest. It was a wooden chest, a wooden box, and inside that box was a small box. And that small box was like a cigar box, just like this. In fact, it was a cigar box. And in that cigar box were medals and pins and patches from my time when my father was in the service. And I pulled one of them out and I looked at it and it says Asiatic Pacific Medal, Campaign Medal. And I'm like, wow, he was in the Pacific. I mean, there's a lot of water and islands fighting the Japanese Empire at that time. And, and that, and I'm like, holy cow, how could he do that? How could he leave his home, his mother, his father, his brothers and sisters, and everything that was familiar uh, to him? How could he How could he do that as a young teenager? He turned 18 three weeks after Pearl Harbor. And that heck of a time to turn 18 years old. And, and, and to, to leave everything familiar and to do that. And, I'm, and I pull that, that medal out in this one here, World War II Victory Medal, and I looked at them and, I, and I'm like, these ain't wrestling medals or football medals. These are World War II Victory Asiatic Campaign. And I go, how did, trying to feel the courage that it took to leave home and to do that. And, and I, it impressed me so much at the time. And I often wondered about that. The other thing that was inside that box was a jacket. It was actually part of a uniform. It was my dad's jacket. It was his jacket that he wore back in the 40s, 1940s. And I, and I looked at that jacket and I looked at those stripes and I says, how did, how did he do this? How did, what did it take to earn this? What did he have to do to earn this rank? And what did these stripes mean? And that, and, and the badges and the pins and, and that, and I used to try this jacket on as a kid. I would remind me, I was 10 years old, you know, 9, 10, 11 years old at the time. And I'd go up in that area, my hands maybe came down to here, and that, that would hang off of me like this. And I would look in the mirror when I put it on, and I'd say, and I'd look at those stripes, and I'd see my face looking in the mirror, and I'd see those stripes, and try to imagine what it would be like if I did that. Well, I, I did do that. And I put that on, fast forward 10 years, I decided to do my part and I joined the Army. I wore my country's uniform for nearly 39 years and I served in Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2004 and 2005. I don't have to wonder anymore what it's like to do that, that service and that sacrifice and that courage. I experienced that. And it's quite, uh, quite an experience, that's all I can say. And remember when I asked you, how many of you want to be like your mom and dad? Well, my son served his country in the Army too. He said, I want to do my part. He too served in Iraq. And with that, I brought this with me. Three generations of servicemen. This is my father, I wore that same jacket that he has on, that I have here today. And yes, that's me, way back in the day in 1974, in the Army, and then this is my son, uh, who also went into the service, and uh, unfortunately, sadly, uh, while in service and while in Iraq, he gave his life for his country. So, I just wanted to share that Sometimes the military becomes a family business. Some kids follow their uh, 
parents into nursing. Sometimes they follow them into teaching or education. In my family, we followed each other into military service. And that's how we came. It was something that we just did, I guess, you know. Can't explain it, just did it. So, again, we all joined for one reason or another, but we stayed in for another reason. And maybe that was the patriotism and the pride and camaraderie that we felt being in with other servicemen. So we, I know that's why I stayed as long as I did. And I know my dad, he did 21 years, and my son was eight years, and he kept going. And there are other veterans that do the same thing. You may know them. So I'm going to leave you with this today. The first thing, number one, as you leave and you come across the veteran, be sure to thank him and her for their service. This is a wonderful display of that thank you, of that, of that gratitude. So that's number one. Number two, if you have a family member who is or was a veteran, ask to see their uniform, their chest or their box, and ask them about their time in service. Each veteran has a story to tell, and there are no two alike, I guarantee you. And also take the time, number three, take the time to visit the Russ County Historical Society Veterans Group. It's over by the fairgrounds, it's open on weekends, from Memorial Day um, to Labor Day. And there's a lot of veterans history in that building. You may want to uh, tour that facility. And then, number four, just remember that all that needs to be said is I'm thinking you of you on this Veterans Day and thank you for your service. And don't forget, support our soldiers, thank our veterans, and honor our fall. Please be with you and thank you for having me here today.